Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is um, Sunday the 9th of September 2018 and I have crazy hair but we'll deal with that later. <laughs> this is a knitting podcast. I am so glad that you're joining me today whether you're a new viewer or a regular podcast viewer. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Um, as you can probably hear, I am a little bit under the weather. I actually tried to record a podcast this morning and was just sneezing all over the place. So I aborted then, but I am feeling better now. So I thought I might be able to get a quick episode out to you guys because there are some things that I wanted to show you and I had already set up anything, everything anyway. So I'm just going to give this a try, fueled by my good old friend, Mr. Coffee. Um, this is like my fourth cup today. Today, um, <laughs> I'm having one of those coffee days where you make yourself a fresh cup of coffee and then 10 minutes later it's just gone. And then you just keep going like that and eventually end up very cafe caffeinated. Um, anyways, this is a knitting podcast. So let's talk about some knitting. Um, what order should I do this in? Let's do the knitting first and then I'll have some realness at the end as Eric from Sticks Plus Twine would be calling it. Um, so first of all, let's talk about some finished objects. I have two and for this, once again, if you are one of my two sisters, please look away because this is not for you to be watched. All right, so um, I talked about um, the fact that I am planning to knit um, Christmas sweaters for both of my sisters as Christmas presents and you might remember I was um, working on the first one and you guys the first one is done. So this is for my almost 19 year old sister. Um, I knit her the pavement sweater which is a pattern by Vera Valimaki and the camera is blowing out. It's more like that. That is more accurate in terms of the color. Um, so like I said, this is the um, pavement pattern, which I'm knitting for the second time. This time I pretty much exactly stuck to the pattern with the exception of not doing the short row sort of high low shaping at the bottom. I just did a standard, you know, just a straight um, edge, which is a little bit um, crinkly now because this is not completely dry yet after blocking and I had it sitting on my desk, which wasn't that smart. Anyways, and besides that, I actually stuck to the pattern in terms of the increases, decreases and such, which never happens, but that's a good thing about knitting for other people. You can't try it on, so it kind of forced me to stick to what I was supposed to do. <laughs> you can really tell that this has been folded, so I probably need to re-block that, but oh well. Um, anyways, um, this was knit out of some sport weight yarn um, by Fair Alpaca. Um, but this, um, unlike what the name suggests, the yarn and this one is actually a merino sport weight yarn. This is the label. Um, I've talked about this a couple of times. I had um, 300 grams of this uh, sport weight yarn and you guys I only needed less than 200 grams. So I only needed four balls of this yarn, which is like, I think 500 meters to knit the sweater. Admittedly, it is a cropped sweater with um, three quarter length sleeves and I need the extra small size because my sister is tiny. But still, I thought that was really impressive. So I'm really happy to have this done. Um, it is very, very soft. I blocked it because it is a superwash sweater and I was um, just interested and worried about how much this would grow, but it hasn't really grown that much. So I'm very happy with it. It did bleed a lot. So even though I have washed it, I will tell my sister or actually more likely my mum because she, she is the one doing laundry for my sister to not wash this um, with anything or maybe wash it by itself or just be very careful when washing this the first couple of times. But then this should be fine. It is a super wash yarn. So this sweater is done. Um, I knit it on four millimeter needles in case you're interested. It is supposed to be knit on um, a very loose gauge with fingering weight yarn. As you saw, I used sport weight, but it worked out really well. I got gauge and that's all that matters. 
All right, I have a second finished object and my voice is already getting very, very croaky. Coffee, coffee to the rescue for anything. Um, and this is a finished object that I think you've never seen as a work in progress. But you know how everyone and their grandmother is knitting with mohair these days. And it's really, really popular to hold like a strand of mohair yarn with different yarns. And you know, I'm one of those people who just keeps everything in terms of their stash. So like years and years ago, I had some um, drops um, merino, no, kid silk, which is their sort of mohair and silk blend. And I actually wanted to de-stash it, but never did. And apparently things get back into fashion. So now the trend is all the mohair. And I have this in like a really old stash. So I'm really, really proud of finding that. And then I decided to just see how I like it because I'm considering doing my wedding shawl um, in the same fashion where you do like a strand of merino uh, held together with a, a strand of mohair. So I thought I'd just knit myself up a hat and use some stash here and, and try and see how I like it. So this is the Drops Yarn, Drops Kid Silk. Um, it comes in 25 gram balls. I think they have different kinds of labels. This may be an older label. Um, and I hold, held this double with this yarn from Hedgehog Fibers. This is their Hedgehog Fibers Merino DK, which I got on a sale um, one day, which was incredibly lucky. And the colorway is Naive. And you guys, I knit a hat and it has a rainbow stitch marker attached to it. So this is not a pattern, I just um, did a freestyle hat. So what I did is I used four millimeter needles, which I think is US size six, cast on 84 stitches, did a two by two rib, and then just changed to moss stitch. And then um, for the, in terms of the decreases, I just did um, central double decreases every uh, like four lines of central double decreases. And I decided to then always knit these stitches so you can see the lines, which I think are really, really pretty. You can see the halo. This is super soft. Should I put it on and ruin my hair? Yes, I should. It's not like that. there's that much to ruin anyways. And isn't it perfect? I love it. Um, I want, I, I really like a long rib. I could fold this up if I wanted to, but I like my hats to be like slightly slouchy, but not super slouchy. And this is just perfectly comfortable, it is squishy, it is soft, it's actually so soft that Kai now wants a hat like this as well, admittedly in different colors. Um, so we'll see about that. I would definitely do it, except you might remember I am technically on a yarn diet. And as some of you have suggested, well, he could buy himself like a skein of um, the mohair because I do have the right yarn to go with the mohair in my stash. But then again, I can't let a single skein of mohair travel by itself. So that would mean I would have to buy some for me and thereby I would ruin my yarn diet. So that's where we are on that. But yeah, this is my hat. I really, really love it. It is so comfortable. I might just leave it on, even though it completely does not match my outfit. But who cares? In terms of what I'm wearing anyways, um, this is a really old sweater. I was going through my closet and I actually was going to throw this out because I never wear it. But then I've been just, I just put it on to try it on and see how I like it. And I actually really, really enjoy the sweater. This is the Robin sweater by Jose Paquin. Paquin? Paquin? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. You can find that um, as the Robin sweater in my project pages on Ravelry. Um, I knit this, I think like three or four years ago. Um, I used some BC Garin, which is from Denmark, I believe. I think it was just called Merino Extra Fine or something. It's just a, I think it's not, it's not even a super wash yarn. It was just a very fine fingering red yarn. I used four colors um, and I never wore this, but this is, as you can see, maybe it's quite big. It's kind of oversized. It has a nice shape to it. And this was my first ever top-down raglan sweater. So I've just been wearing this around the house and I'm actually really enjoying it. It is very sort of light and easy to wear and yeah. Um, the only thing is that three years ago or whenever I knitted this, I never woven any ends. So there are like 
all the ends still attached to this. And lesson learned, if you don't weave in your ends, they will still not be woven in years later because apparently they don't do that themselves. So I might need to do that sometime. I wouldn't really choose these colors again. This was back when I kind of just experimented more than I do now. But they're not bad. There's nothing wrong with the colors. So yeah, happy find in my wardrobe. I cleaned out my wardrobe yesterday, which turned into a major um, cleaning up thing. Um, it all started with Marie Kondo, because obviously that's what everyone does and has been doing for years. I listened to the audiobook. Um, and I've been wanting to clean out my, um, just my clothes for a while because I'm actually one of those people who likes having very few clothes. I know everyone loves shopping and I'm more like, I love throwing clothes out. So I did finally do a major wardrobe clean out yesterday, I think. And then I infected Kai with it. So I think we've um, got, and I gave away eight huge bags of old clothes. Um, and then I started sorting through my knitwear and washing all my knitwear and that's obviously when I found all the sweaters and um, so it turned into a pretty big sort of thing and we're not completely finished yet but it felt really really good and I feel like now I know more what I have and what, I, what I'm lacking um, I also realized that I wear my hand knit sweaters a lot more than I wear my shawls so it's kind of making me think I should knit more sweaters and less shawls, which is what I've been doing anyways. But all of that aside, that's how I found the sweater and I'm glad I did. And I'm glad I didn't throw it out. I did actually throw out a couple of hand knit sweaters, which yes, I know it will make your hearts bleed probably because they were okay sweaters, but I just didn't love them. So I thought I'd give them to someone who does love them. So that was a big waffle that had nothing to do with this hat or my finished objects, but oh well. Oh yeah, <laughs> I have to laugh now. I'll address this later. Um, some of you may realize why I'm laughing. Um, moving on, let's move on to some whips. Works in progress. Um, where do we start? Let's just start from the top of this mountain. In this bag, I have my King Cole socks that I showed you last week. This is the first one which has now been finished. I took this with me on a business trip last week. Um, I think I had just finished the heel and then I knit pretty much down to the toe on the train and Kitchener it when I got back. Um, and I have since started the second sock, but you guys, there's a bit of a yarn tangle going on. My ball of yarn just barfed and I need to fix that. It was much worse before. Anyways, sorry for the needles. I'm not really sure what my needles are doing in my project bag. These are my shawl needles. Um, the yarn is King Cole Zigzag um, in their Blossom colorway, which is number 3167. I am doing 64 stitch socks on a US size 1 2.25 millimeter needle with a garter stitch fish lips casino. So that is that and I feel like I'm so I'm so irritated by what I'm seeing on my camera because it's all not matching and all crazy knitwear. Kind of like when I started podcasting. Oh well. There I did it again. Um Next up, I am still also working on my two at a time socks. Um, these socks are knit um, two at a time from a sock blank from Hedge Row Yarns. Um, and the sock blank is not a double stranded yarn one. It's a single stranded one that I just cut into two halves and decided to knit two at a time. And this is where we are. So again, I took this when I was on my business trip last week. Um, I did really long legs for these socks. You can see the heel is down here. And now I'm a little under halfway down the foot. So I put in the heels. I once again did fish lips kiss heels. Um, these socks are all crinkled because A, they are sock blank socks. So the yarn is crinkly and makes a crinkled fabric. And B, because um, 
once again, they have been squished into a project bag, which has then been squished into my handbag, and that's just how that goes. But I still really, really like them. Um, they're a glitter base, so there's silver stellina in the yarn, and I think it's really pretty. Ooh, the sun is coming in. That's not good. But maybe you can see the sparkle. There we go. All right, so that is it in terms of my socks. Um, I also have two more works in progress. Actually, when I recorded this morning, I, or attempted to record this morning, there was only one more, but I have since cast on a new sweater. So um, the sweater that I cast on, once again, is using staff yarn, which I'm really happy um, about. Um, I'm trying to knit more from stash and especially using up the things that I like but not necessarily love. So I have a huge sweaters quantity of this yarn in my stash. This is Drops Lima, which is a DK weight alpaca and wool blend. I used this yarn to knit Kai a sweater ages ago. I think when we just met. I knit him the boyfriend sweater and we didn't break up, so apparently the boyfriend sweater curse didn't work on us, which is good. Um, I originally had ordered this yarn um, to knit a Ver Veronica cardigan, but then realized that while I like the idea of a Veronica cardigan, it may not necessarily be something I need in my wardrobe. So I decided to jump on the bandwagon with Amy of the Stranded um, podcast, who is doing a rocane along. So the um, rocane is a pattern by the designer, I think her last name is Danahy. Um, and it was published in a pom-pom magazine last year, but has since been released on Ravelry. And Amy is hosting a knit along, so I thought that would be fun. That seems like a really quick well, as quick as sweaters go, it seems like a quick knit. And a couple of people who I know have knitted and said it went really quickly. So I thought that would be a fun project to use as some stash. So um, for the first one, um, my first try, I didn't swatch. I just cast on using 3.5 millimeter needles instead of the 4 millimeter needles that were required because I know my gauge is usually bigger. So um, you start with a provisional cast on and then go straight into the stockinette. So I did the provisional cast on, which takes a while, went into the stockinette and this thing was a tent. So yes, swatching would have been much faster than finding out that way. So I ripped it all out again, did a swatch on an even smaller needle. I went down to a three millimeter needle and this time I got gauge. So this is my tiny swatch. I do small swatches because I really only care about the stitch gauge rather than the row, ga row gauge. So that is my swatch and now I have recast on. I did the provisional cast on once more and now I have this. So because it is a stockinette tube, it's all rolling up and not very interesting for you guys to look at, but this is where I am. Um, um, so yes, yeah, I'm knitting the body upwards now, so I'm knitting a sea of stockinette until I reach the textured section, which will be the most interesting part. And then later you unpick the provisional cast on and knit the ribbing down. Um, the sweater is very cropped and I'm not huge on cropped sweaters, so I'm planning to knit um, at least an extra two inches, if not even four on the stockinette and then do the ribbing after because I don't want the rib to hit me too high. Like that's just not really my style. But we'll see how it goes. I'm just really happy to be at this point again. I was I think even further on it before and ripping it out kind of hurt. But it's my own fault for not swatching. So that's where we are with that using stash yarn. Um, the colorway for this is 4434, which is one of their heathered colorways, and I think it's really pretty. It will be even prettier once it doesn't look like a yearny mess like this. Oh, well. Ah, I'll just leave it. Leave it to that. Um, lastly, I still am working on my Jolie sweater, which again, I don't know the name of the designer, but again, you can find it on my project page. 
I showed this to you last week and I had just split for the sleeves. This is a top, top down sweater with um, lace at the top. Um, and this is where we are and my camera hates this color. But you get the idea, it's a lace top and now I'm just working an endless sea of stockinette. But I did try this on yesterday and it motivated me again to work on it because it fits really, really beautiful and I think this will be a really good addition to my wardrobe. Um, but it is kind of slow going with the um, yarn that I'm using. It's a fingering to sport weight yarn and I think my ga gauge is pretty small so I feel like it takes me a long time to go round and round and I've only made like this is how much progress I've made from the marker down. So it's not very much considering I spent a couple of hours working on this. But yeah, I just need patience for this, I suppose. I still really like this project and I think I'm going to wear it a ton. Um, the yarn that I'm using is um, Vollmeiser that I got in their summer sale this year. Um, it was reduced because it has a couple of knots. I already found one and it wasn't a big deal. It's just a couple of more ends to weave in. It's in their pure base, which is a 100% wool yarn in the colorway Fliederbusch. So that's where we are with that. I am alternating skeins, which doesn't make it faster. <laughs> it also makes it a little bit less portable, but it is definitely worth it because otherwise I would have a line when I um, change cakes. And I only have two cakes anyways, because they are 150 gram skeins. So I don't need to worry about like mixing three skeins or three cakes or anything like that. So I think it's okay. So that is it in terms of my sweaters. Um, moving on to some acquisitions. I feel like I'm rushing through this, but also my throat is starting to hurt. So that's not a bad thing. Um, you may remember my yarn diet, um, that is still going strong after one week. <laughs> um, there is still stuff coming in, mainly because A, I'm very lucky and people sent me stuff, um, and B, because um, some stuff just hasn't arrived um, from before I started my yarn diet. So let's talk about, um, what should we start with? Um, the yarn that arrived um, was, um, why am I saying um so much? I forgot how to podcast. You may remember I am part of um, the Neons and Neutrals Club by Rachel Coopy, who is Coopnitz and has the Socks Year brand. And Kai gave me that for my birthday. It was a five month club. So the fifth shipment and the last shipment arrived last week, I think. So if you don't want to see, please look away because I'm going to show the yarn. So this month I got these three skeins. And these two are actually different shades. I'm not sure how I feel about them. They are very, I like both of them, but they're so close together that I don't think they go that great together. But obviously I can use them separately and that'll be fine. So there are shades Obsidian and Axonite. And then the neon skein is this one. This is Helium. It is super bright. This is actually my second skein of this because I ordered one for Kai as well a couple of months ago. Because he wants some more neon socks and you can see how neon that is. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Crazy neon. But I love it. Um, so these three arrived. I'm kind of sad this club is over because I've just been enjoying um, collecting these skeins. I knit one pair of socks out of this yarn so far and I really like this yarn. I really enjoyed knitting with it. So it may become a future sweater go-to yarn one day, but not now because I'm not buying yarn and I have enough really. So that's the first thing that arrived and then... Um, a lovely view of this podcast. I think she asked me about some yarn store recommendations in Munich a couple of months back because she was visiting and she said she would want she wanted to bring me some yarn from Iceland. So that arrived and made me so happy. Um, 
She sent me really good chocolates. I'm looking at them right now. They're so yummy. Um, and then she sent me some yarn from Iceland. So first of all, she sent me three balls of Let Lopi, which of course is very typical yarn from there and I love it. I'm actually, this arrived and reminded me that I have a sweater in it out of this yarn and made me pull it out and I wore it all week and it was really really nice because this week the weather had been quite cool at least in the mornings and evenings and our apartment is relatively cold now and it just made me fall back in love with this yarn which is great because she gave me these three balls um, I'm not sure if you can see this black has all these colors in it it's really interesting so I have some leftovers from the sweater that I knit out of this yarn before and I think it would be really, really fun to combine these with what I already have left and make a very colorful second Let Lopi sweater one day. And then she also sent me some yarn from Lopi, which I am even more excited about. This is Plötte Lopi. Um, and I've heard about this stuff, but I've never seen it in person slash owned it. This is, sorry. This is essentially, I think, um, it's roving. So this yarn hasn't been plied, it hasn't even really been twisted, and it is sort of like the single or two of these strands of Plotilopi, I think, make up this Letlopi, if I'm not mistaken. I might be. But anyways, I'm just really interested to knit with this. I think this would be really fun to knit into color work. This is, what does it say? 300 meters per 100 grams, so this is about a sport weight and this one is 100 meters per 50 grams so it doesn't really work out in terms of what I just told you but anyways very excited about this and thank you so much to my friend Asta for thinking of me and providing me with more yarn um, the last thing that arrived is um, a book that I picked up um, this is the new shawls book by Melanie Berg, um, or Berg. Why am I pronouncing it English? I'm German, I should know how to pronounce her name. Anyways, um, she came out with this book. I'm sure lots of you know her as a designer. She has some beautiful shawl designs. And I've never knit any of her patterns. I haven't even bought any of hers. So I thought this would be a great way to just get some of her most um, favorite patterns as well as a couple of new ones that she released in this book sort of like in one publication I kind of want to expand my knitting library because it is very very small so I picked this up and I'm very excited about it um, I'm sure you know lots of her patterns but the one that I'm really excited, excited about is the Joker and the Thief this one I've been wanting to knit that and I think that looks really really fun and then the other one that I really liked which one was it it's also just really nice to have a book there's some mosaic mosaic knitting in there um, yeah Solaris this is another one that I've been wanting to make and yeah so I'm very happy with this book and looking forward to read it some more I haven't really looked into it that much so that is it in terms of my acquisitions and that is the end of my knitting content um so in terms of what's been happening um in life in general actually before i talk about life in general i wanted to talk about some realness so um i don't know how to address this i always feel like i'm going to be super eloquent and then i'm not because i'm just not that kind of person um, I want to start with what happened um, and this isn't the first time it's happened it's not, not not something super super important but last weekend we came back early from a trip um, and part of why we came back early was so I could record a podcast because yes um, podcasting looks really simple but it does require quite a bit of work and time and effort um, so I recorded a podcast feeling pretty good about myself and then I get comments like I love your podcast but your music is really annoying or I love your podcast but could you please stop saying oh well 
and things like that pop up every now and then and I mostly ignore them but they did start getting to me because quite frankly um, I'm doing this for free. I'm doing this in my own time while working full time and not making money from it. I'm taking time out of my day, out of my weekends usually to record this podcast, which is fine because I love doing it and I love our community. But that kind of um, really sucks, to be honest. Um, and I'm not trying to be super sensitive here or make you all send me lovely messages and compliments because I know this is only a very f small fraction of people who act like that. But I just wanted to put it out there to think about it. Um, if you watch a movie and you don't like it, do you send an email to the producer saying, could you please do this differently? I, li I, don't, I don't like it. Or if you read a book, if you watch a show on Netflix, do you have the same sort of critical feedback that you give podcasters? Um, I know I'm not the only podcaster who's affected by that. And I feel like lots of podcasters are really going out of the way to be super nice because it's hard to not be nice. And then I know like for us, just for saying this, I'm going to lose followers and so on. But then again, the truth is I'm not really doing this to maximize my numbers of subscribers, followers, whatever. I don't really care about that too much. So I just wanted to speak up about that, not only for my podcast, but maybe even for other podcasters and Instagrammers and just people in the knitting community as well. To just think about what you're saying and think about if your criticism is really asked for. Because I don't remember asking for feedback. And quite frankly, a lot of feedback is really obvious. And like, I know if I had a professional studio, professional camera, maybe spent the entire day um, recording this podcast, put a lot of money into equipment. Yes, it would be better. I know that. But there's a reason why I don't do that. Um, and I would just ask that you respect that. I'm always open to upgrading and trying to record the best, best podcast possible. But also there are lots of different podcasts. And just like in the real world, you know, there are always things and people that you like more than others. And that's fine. Um, so I would just please ask you to, or maybe all of us, to just think about it. Sometimes I think we are really fast in providing feedback and sometimes even providing feedback when it hasn't been asked. I know I have done that in the past. So I just wanted to address that really quickly. Please do not feel like I am being rude. Please don't feel like I'm forcing you to say really positive things now. I just wanted to speak up. And yeah, um, if you don't like the way that I speak, talk, um, you know, that's fine. I'm not even mad at you for that. I sometimes watch podcasters and I don't really just like it. But in that case, I will just ask you to maybe watch another podcast and I won't be mad, I promise. So that is it. And I hope that wasn't too negative. Like I said, I'm usually not as eloquent as I would want to be. Um, moving on to life in general, um, you guys, it's been a week. Uh, it's been a terrible week, honestly. It's been, I knew it was going to be exhausting and let's just forget about this week. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I'm feeling much better now, except that I seem to have caught a cold, which again is really annoying and that always hits me on the weekends, which, well, such is life, right? But I am doing much better now. Thank you for everyone as well who sent me um, like get well soon messages on Instagram and such. I really, really appreciate that. Um, because it's been really busy. I haven't had as much knitting time as I want, but I've been trying to catch up with knitting on the weekend. I'm hoping to maybe have some more time next week. Um, like I mentioned before, I went through a big Marie Kondo phase and so we started cleaning out our apartment. We did a major cleanup yesterday, which feels so good. Um, and we're not done yet. There's still some things that need to be sorted out as well as wedding invitations, which have finally arrived and that now again need to be, um, finished and sent out. So there's plenty of stuff to do, but I'm trying to 
keep calm and not go too crazy about it. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. I'm not sure if that was super informative, but there you go. So since my voice is going and I'm running out of things to say, I think I'm just going to end it here. So thank you so much for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope to see you again very soon and, and until then have a great weekend, have a great week, have fun with your knitting and um, I will see you very very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye!